Hola Pescaditos, how's it going? Today we're going to be doing a review of my Ascend 12T fishing kayak. So, let's get started. So, I've had my Ascend 12T for probably about three months now. I've taken it out at least a couple dozen times, uh, maybe closer to three dozen times. I've been doing a lot of fishing out of it, a lot of kayaking out of it. So I thought now would be a good time to do kind of an in-depth review on what I think about it, the features of it front to back, and then maybe also some overarching concepts that you can't really just look at it and kind of figure out like the, uh, the stability, durability, the tracking, things like that. If you're watching this, you're probably considering buying it and it's either gonna be your first kayak or you're upgrading from maybe a much more basic kayak. Uh, the Ascend 12T is kind of, I wouldn't say middle of the road, maybe, maybe on the lower side of middle when you talk about the grand scheme of things and prices on kayaks. Uh, considering they get up to you know three thousand dollars fairly easily when you talk about some hobies and some vibes and things like that when they have like the pedal motors and stuff like that um, but anyways um, I got my Ascend 12T I bought it new a lot of people have been buying kayaks lately the used market um, you can get stuff pretty cheap on the used market but a lot of the kind of higher end stuff or middle of the road stuff it's harder to find right now um, so you're almost paying new prices for it even if you're buying it online but you can get good deals on it you just got to be patient with it and uh, and wait however I did buy mine new so let's talk about the Ascend 12T first of all the name obviously has something to do with the length of the kayak because it is 12 feet long now that is pretty long for a kayak um, I know they do that for several reasons one it helps with the stability of it your ability to stand and fish from it which is a feature that I really enjoy however it is very difficult to maneuver on your own unless you're dragging one in or you have a cart or something of that nature um, however starting front to back with the kayak and we'll talk more about the length here in a little bit once we get towards the end talking about some of the overall stuff but on the front end of the kayak of course you have a grip at the front um, very convenient very sturdy uh, it's good for dragging the kayak if you need to it's also good for carrying it um, because there's a matching one at the end of the kayak uh, so two people can very easily pick it up and move it now it's fairly heavy it's over 70 pounds and when you start talking about putting gear on it and things of that nature it uh, quickly gets much heavier so if you're going to be carrying it for any kind of distance make sure you're working on your grip strength because it's it's going to take a little bit to get it where you're going now there's a front storage compartment or kind of recessed area in the very front that has bungee straps on it that's great for storing things probably things that you're not necessarily going to use a lot while you are or access a lot while you're in the kayak it is easy enough to get towards it while you're still on the kayak um, but it does get a little bit wobbly if you start putting your weight way out towards the front of the deck um, I usually just store my Chacos up there sometimes I'll put a camera up there to shoot towards me um, when I'm filming um, and it's also uh, stable enough that you can stand on it and walk to your seat when you're launching the kayak. I usually put the back of the kayak in the water first, walk across the front of the deck, and then push off with my paddle. The front kind of storage area is separated by two little um, kind of dividers that go towards the main deck. Uh, the thing that I like about those is they are wide enough and tall enough that if you wanted to clamp something onto them, you would have the option of doing that, whether it's um, the GoPro clamp and you want to put your GoPro there, or if you want to mount something to it, you'd be able to do that. So moving back, um, you have the main deck area, which has a nice um, cover on it that doesn't get too terribly hot, especially if you get it wet, so you can stand on it barefoot, no problem. Um, the front end of it does lift a little bit off, although it is attached, so stuff can get under there somewhat easily, which I would say is a little bit of a con, but uh, you could easily um, maybe help it out, glue it down a little bit. But here's um, where the first thing that I really have negative to say about this kayak. When we talk about this main storage compartment that's in the center of the kayak, uh, the thing that it does have going for it is, is it has a large door. Um, it's very easy to fit larger items in it. Um, I've put a net in there, a Pelican case for my camera in there, snacks in there, bug spray, water, all that kind of stuff, and it fits totally fine. Um, the downside to it is, it is definitely not watertight and I don't know if it's technically marketed as being a watertight container um, but obviously that's kind of what you would want to use it for it's got a gasket on the lid um, 
However, it is definitely not watertight. If you get water up on the deck of the kayak, it's gonna find its way in there. The thing that I do have positive to say about that storage compartment and the lid for it itself is it's very durable and sturdy. You can stand on the lid no problem. You don't gotta worry about it caving or anything like that. It does just fine. However, if you're putting items in there, they are going to get wet more likely than not. Moving back a little bit farther, you have a cup holder and two little side troughs that are kind of right in front of the seating area. Uh, little side troughs are great. You can drop some pliers in there and just kind of leave them or um, you know, leave your bags of soft plastics. Um, a lot of times I'll just drop my cell phone in there, things of that nature. They just kind of keep it separated and, and, and hold it in place. The cup holder is great. Um, I put a 32 ounce hydro flask in there and it fits perfectly fine so you can fit very large bottles in here. The one negative thing about this cup holder though in the position of it is when you are getting in and out of the seat, if you're not paying attention and especially if you just have the stock seat in there, if you don't sit down way behind the cup holder, you're in for a rude awakening when you go to sit down. So keep that in mind when you are storing taller drinks in there um, or drinks with maybe nozzles or pointy ends on them. So right in front of the seat, and this is kind of talking about the seat itself as well. First of all, the seat that comes with the 12T is phenomenal. It's extremely comfortable, it's extremely adjustable, but one of the issues that I have with the adjustments on it is for the front, I guess we could call it leg, because it's got two bars, one in the front, one in the back is you know what it's actually touching the deck with. But they have these three little uh, channels that you can adjust the where the seat is forward and backwards in the kayak if you leave it in the, the stock seating position. And my problem with that front leg is it moves very easily. Sometimes it gets off track within the kayak track and one will be kind of forward, one will be kind of back and it's, you know, it's not very stable like that. Um, if you have it in the forward one and you go to sit back, it'll bump to the next two. You can even just scoot up a little bit and it'll bump to the ones in front of it. So it's not the most secure in the front seat. However, the back seat's very secure. It slides into a track and it definitely doesn't come out of the track, although it moves forward and backwards easily enough, which maybe that's a pro to you. I think it's a con, but it doesn't affect me anymore anyways because not long after I got my kayak, I modified the seat to raise the height because that is another issue with, in my opinion, if you're going to stand to fish in the 12T, uh, the seat height is a problem. It's not very easily unless you're, I don't consider myself to be extremely athletic, but I'm not, I don't think that I'm not athletic in the sense that I don't think that Okay, if we're talking averages, I would say that I am of average athleticism to maybe slightly more athletic for people my age. But it's not easy to stand up out of the seat while you're on the water. You kind of got to make sure that you're holding the sides and push yourself up a little bit, get under your feet, and then stand. Sitting down is the same way. You kind of fall into the seat for the bottom part of sitting down. So I wanted a little bit of more height out of my out of my kayak seat. It's easier to fish from a higher seat, um, and it's definitely easier to stand up and sit down in it. So I did a seat modification. I tried to shoot a video on it. Uh, most of the footage was on my phone and that phone is at the bottom of a pond. So uh, maybe later on down the road, if you're interested, I'll do another video on how I did the seat modification, but I basically raised it about five or six inches and it only cost me 30 bucks to do it. Now, once I did that, I had absolutely no complaints about the seat. And the added benefit of raising the seat is you have more storage under the seat now. Now, honestly, you can fit stuff under the seat when it's in its stock position, um, but again, you gain about uh, about half a foot of vertical storage under the seat if you modify it, and you can fit a lot of larger items under it that way. So directly behind uh, your seat is a secondary, really two secondary storage compartments. You have one immediately behind the seat and then one matching the one that's on the front of the kayak on the back that has bungees over it. I don't use the one on the very back that often because you can't really access it from the seat. Unless you have incredibly long arms, a grabber or something like that, or you're getting out of the kayak, or maybe even a buddy who's kayaking with you who can access that storage compartment, it's not easily accessible from where you're sitting. That other storage compartment though that's directly behind the seat, perfect, phenomenal. It's sized uh, just right to where you can put a milk crate in it. Um, I actually, and I'll show you this as well, I usually put a milk crate and then a soft cooler that I have. They fit perfectly in there. 
and then I bungee it with uh, two of the D-rings that aren't back there because there's four D-rings attached, which are very durable. I use those D-rings to secure my milk crate and my cooler, and then I also use it to clip a figure nine carabiner to it and use for my anchor. The other thing that we need to talk about is the two fishing pole holders that it has. It only comes with two. Um, a lot of fishing kayaks come with more than that. This one has two. They're, they're angled out the back kind of for trolling. Um, I've done a little bit of trolling with them and actually gotten a couple bites that way. Mainly you're just using them to store your poles. The angle's good for trolling. It's not good for much else. You can access them reasonably. It's not difficult to get a pole when you are sitting down. It's not super easy to get one when you're standing up. They have two rings attached to the fishing pole holders that I guess you could put a leash on if you're into that type of thing. I don't really mess with it, but it's there if you want to. So overall with the fishing pole holders, I guess I'd give them like a C plus. They're all right, B minus maybe. Back up to the center of the kayak, you do have tracks that come on the kayak on either side. Those are, are great. I've used them a little bit, just kind of messing around with them. My intent is to attach a fish finder to it here in the next couple of months so stay tuned for a video on that and review on whichever fish finder i get once i get accustomed to it there's also a oar holder on the left side of the kayak when you're when you're sitting in it on the left side it's good it's 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 convenient to have it it's it's good for storage purposes they're not the most robust uh paddle holders. I think what I'm probably going to do is get some heavier duty ones from Railblazer or something like that and uh, put them in the track mounts on the very front so it can go across the kayak because it's also more convenient to grab it when it's across than when it is on one side. Another feature that the kayak has that I, I didn't really touch on or talk about is the, is the foot pedals. They're adjustable they're fine, they're not indestructible, but because they are made out of plastic, but they slide up and down the tracks on there just fine. You adjust them where you want it and you pretty much leave them alone. But honestly, that's about it feature-wise for this, this kayak. It's got a lot of things that you need, not a whole lot of things that you don't need. So it's not overly complicated or overly simplified. I would say that it's, it's probably a really good option if um, you're looking to get your first kayak or if you um, are maybe upgrading from maybe like a real basic sun dolphin one where there's not any kind of adjustability in it. A couple of notes just overall on the kayak. So the size of it, first of all, 12 foot long. It's a long kayak. I know they probably make longer ones. It's not too bad getting it in and out of my truck bed. Um, I have a bed extender that I use for it and uh, it secures just fine. Slide it in, slide it out, no big deal. I prefer to use two people to move it because I I try to take care of my stuff. I don't want it to get all scuffed and scraped up. That's gonna happen anyways. It's a kayak, you're taking it out on the water. If you're taking it out on the river, it's gonna get river rash. You're using it outdoors, that's just what happens. But I usually try to use two people because I don't wanna have to drag it across gravel or concrete or whatever it may be to launch it and really scuff up the bottom of it really bad. Of course, you can get like a, a kayak cart something like that to avoid that and I would definitely recommend that you do that if you're going to be maneuvering this kayak on your own because it is also very heavy. It's over 70 pounds. With gear loaded down it's probably closer to 80-85. That's not a problem as far as paddling it. Once you get going in the water it moves just fine. It's definitely not easy to pick up on your own because of its size and weight and then if you're in the river and it gets uh, upriver from you and is coming down towards you and you need to stop it, it's probably going to knock you over if the river's moving at any kind of speed. If I could go back, I might get the 10 foot version of it, but of course I think the length probably also contributes to how stable this kayak is. It is extremely stable. You can stand up on it no problem. I never had to like learn how to stand up on it. Stood up on the thing, started fishing, we were good to go. So extremely stable, you can land big fish in it, swing them up on the kayak, and do your thing and not worry about tipping over. I've never fallen out of this thing. Um, I've leaned very far over the edge on it and it has not tipped. As far as the general durability, I've found that it's, it's more durable than I expected it to be. When I compared it to some of the other kayak brands, I did feel like the plastic on it that it's roto molded from maybe feels a little bit cheaper, but I haven't really had any issues with it. It's got some scuffs, it's got some scrapes, um, but nothing major. So overall, I'm, I've been impressed with the durability, uh, whereas I was originally worried about it. But so far, it, um, it's, it's been holding up good, and I anticipate it holding up for years to come. Um, I'll probably want a different kayak well before this one is used past the point of it being serviceable anymore. 
But uh, those are kind of my thoughts on the Ascend 12T. Overall, I would say that if it's convenient for you to pick one up and it sounds like it has the features that you want, go ahead and get it. I don't think you'll be disappointed in it. I think these things hold their value well, or at least kayaks in general do right now, and it'll get you out of the water, it'll get you fishing, and get you having a good time. So those are kind of my thoughts on the Ascend 12T. Very happy with mine so far. Uh, I don't foresee getting rid of it anytime in the near future. Anyways, appreciate you clicking on the video, watching, um, and you know, considering my opinion to help make your decision and seeing if this is a kayak that you want. Um, but uh, go ahead and drop a like, leave a comment. Did I leave anything out? Uh, is your experience any different with this kayak? Do you think that it's garbage? Let me know below. But uh, this has been Caleb with Certified Dinks, and we'll catch you on the next one.